going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Avery LR32 here, and smash the ever living runic boo boo stain out of that subscribe button so we can get to our goal of 1,000 subscribers. We are so close. We're at 964. We only need 36 more. Please don't make me go and make 36 alternate accounts. <laughs> Uh, all jokes aside, though, uh, please help us get to 1,000 subscribers. I would absolutely love it. And you know I love it when you like that video and also hit that Taco Bell notification bell. So thank you all so much for tuning in. So uh, I want to do a Runic deck profile because with the new format and with Darkwing Blast basically here, I mean the premiere is this upcoming weekend, um, I wanted to cover Runics for the new format uh, because moving forward, I thought that they're going to be Honestly, one of the best rogue decks moving forward as I try and get my mouse out of view here so that y'all aren't distracted by the light. Um, but I feel like with the release of Freki, the Runic Fangs, which is another fusion name that the deck is able to use, and it's also a 2000 attack chump blocker. We're going to be getting more into that later. I feel that this deck has a lot going for it, and it's also splashable into a lot of different decks. You know, whether it's Sprite, I've even seen Tier Element trying to play it. However, I feel like Pure, or even just like a Mystic Mind stall strategy, can be very good for this format moving forward, especially when we get the new milling support in Magnificent Mavens, which is going to most likely make Tier Element Tier 0. I think that this is going to be a very good Dark Horse deck of the format because it just banishes everything. It doesn't trigger the Kelbeck or the Aigido to make both players mill 5, which the more milling that Tier Element can do, the better. So... I want to start off with the extra deck here because I feel that that's more of an extension of the monster lineup as a whole since we're only playing three copies of one type of monster in the deck. So let's go ahead and dive into that here. There are uh, a couple proxies left because I'm still waiting for stuff in the mail, but we are playing three copies of Hugin. Hugin's absolutely amazing. The fact that anytime it pops, it just goes back into the extra deck so you can use your runic spells to keep resummoning it, using its effect that's not a hard once per turn to ditch a card and get Fountain to your hand is just absolutely amazing. Again, this is just a proxy, but you do play three copies. We're also playing at three copies of Gary. So what's awesome about Gary is that he gets any uh, non-quick play spell from Grave to hand, so he just gets you back the field spell. He can't be destroyed by card effects, so they have to pop it by battle, and then you can pop any card on the field whenever he is destroyed by battle. So the typical play is that you're going to go like summon Gary into the extra monster zone, since all the runic spells have to summon a monster to the extra monster zone. Uh, you'll trigger the fountain on Chinlink 1, and then use Gary on Chinlink 2 to get a fountain from Grave back to your hand. That way, you cannot get Ash. You can only get Imperm or Valor, because they have to respond to the Gary. So you're guaranteed to get the fountain off. So, yeah, very fantastic. Absolutely love it. Wouldn't change it at all. We're also playing three copies of Mune, and this is pretty much just for your win condition in time. Um, you can also use it if your hand isn't the best. You can like summon out Munin and then you can go for the monster that we're playing. Uh, summon that out with either Reasoning or Tribute this off from Monster Gate to get to that monster. And then, you know, try and make some plays from there. So Munin is really good. And then, like I said, we are playing three copies of Freki. I just don't have the proxy here for it. But, I mean, it's going to be out like this week with the premiere. We're playing three copies of Freki and then you can either play one to two copies of Nightmare Phoenix, and then one to two copies of Nightmare Unicorn, depending on what you want to do. Um, so Freki's effect, just to kind of go over it real quick, uh, is that it's a 2,000 attack, zero defense, fusion monster. Um, no battle damage is done with battles involving him, so neither player takes any damage. That's awesome. Again, he's 2,000 attack, so already at base value, he can be kind of hard to get around if the opponent doesn't have something with, you know, more than 2,000 on the field or something like that. And then whenever he's destroyed and sent to the grave, he gets you a runic quick play spell from grave to hand, and whenever he battles, so if he attacks or if he's being attacked, he makes the opponent banish the top two. So if you get off Fountain and you send back three to draw three, and then you bring out Freki and they pop it, then you're essentially drawing four because now you're going to get a fourth quick play spell, but instead of going into the deck, it's going to come right into your hand. So you could leave like a tip in grave after using Fountain to send back three. They pop Freki, and then you get tip to hand, and that's another one that's essentially just a blank runic spell because it just becomes any runic spell that you need. So I really like Freki at three copies. I just, you know, got to wait for Darkwing Blast. And then Phoenix is just good for getting rid of stuff like anti spell or, you know, anything like that that could potentially bother you. The extra deck is very flexible. That's what's really cool about this deck is that. You know, just depending on how you want to build it, you can be very flexible with the extra deck. So now, moving on to the main deck. As the monster I just mentioned, we're playing three copies of Cyber Valley. This card's busted. You know, you just go summon out Munin or something, summon out Cyber Valley, banish build to draw two, and keep your engine going. Yes, this is based off of the Oceanic build. 
Uh, and then we're playing three copies of Dark Ruler No More because you got to be able to break boards. This card's just insane. And then, because it didn't get banned, <laughs> we're going to ride this train till the wheels fall off. Three copies of Mystic Mine. You know, the opponent's down to a couple cards left in their deck. They most likely don't have an out to Mystic Mine. If they did, they probably would have, you know, already banished it or they have it in their hand to try and pop Fountain. So, you know, they got two cards left in the deck. You just play on Mystic Mine, just sit there, just stare at each other, ask them how their day's going. Compliment them on their outfit. I don't know. <laughs> And then we're playing three copies of Fountain. I've seen some main, like, just regular Runic builds playing only two copies. I don't know why, because you can recycle with these with Hugin and Gary. And uh, keep in mind, again, it is a soft once per turn. So you activate one, use its effect, send back three, draw three. You know, summon out Gary after you use, like, Monster Gator Reasoning to tribute one of your fusions. Get a Fountain back to your hand and just, you know, keep your engine going. And then, of course, we're playing two copies of Demise of the Land, because with six targets, it's really good. These cards are, like, $10 a piece. Uh, I would pick these up while you can. Um, three blank cards. <laughs> like, this can either be a runic monster, or it just searches for any runic spell. It, it's a Rota. It's a blank card. Like, it's it's a blank Uno card. <laughs> like, th this card is so damn good. There's a reason why this card's like $40, I think, or something? $30? It's such an amazing searcher. Like, you don't care that it's once per turn. It's it's just so, so amazing. It becomes any runic spell that you need. And, like, I mean, if you got Fountain Up, you can use a tip draw one, and then activate just the tip on the next turn to get another card, and like, it's it's just good. And then we're playing three copies of Slumber. This one makes your opponent mill three. First time one of your monsters, first time a monster on the field this turn be destroyed by battle by card effect, it's not destroyed, just keeps your monsters alive. So like, when we get Freki, like basically next week, and they try to attack into it, you can go Slumber, target Freki, make a mill three, Freki's gonna make a mill two more, and then Freki won't die, because it's affected by Slumber. So, that becomes an instant Banish 5. And then we're playing three copies of arguably the best Runic card in the deck, uh, and that's Droplet. You know, the opponent draws one, Banish 4, that, that, that's that's a mill of 5 right there. You know, uh, someone told me that the best way to beat Runic is to just not play the game, because then at that point, if you're not playing any cards, the only Runic spells that they can use is Droplet, Tip, and then if they have Dispelling in their hand with Droplet, then Dispelling. Um, but to me, I'm just like, as long as I can recycle Droplet and Tip, like, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that my other ones are irrelevant. I'm just going to keep on just getting as much gas to the floor as I can. And then we're playing three copies of Dispelling. Any time that a card's added from the opponent's deck to hand, including by drawing, except in the draw phase, make them ditch a random card and banish two. So, typically, you'll go Droplet and then activate Dispelling, and then, you know, just make them ditch a card and banish two more. So it makes your droplet basically become what? A banish seven or a mill seven at that point? And then only, I'm sorry, I thought we were only playing two copies. Three copies of Flash Fire. I'm thinking of Destruction. We're only playing two Destruction. Flashing Fire is really good. You know, being able to pop especially some monster and banish two and just act as an interruption to the opponent is, is just amazing. If you're going first, you can just use this to summon a Runic Fusion. It's, it's just an overall really good card. Uh, two copies of Destruction. This is the one I thought I was about to say we played three of, but no, we only played two of. Um, it's it's a back row removal card. It makes the opponent banish four. Um, it's good if you open with it. The opponent goes first. They try and hit you with anti-spell. Um, you can just hit, you know, the anti-spell. It's basically just another out to it. But, I mean, I'm not really seeing a lot of anti-spell right now. Um, really, the main thing I'm seeing is, like, Eradicator. You know, Eradicator just kills this deck. And that's what makes tier such an easy, but yet also really tough matchup. Because if you go first and tier, you know, tries to pop off on you during your turn, well, you're just going to keep on making the mill. If the tier player goes first and for whatever reason can't or just doesn't go for the Eradicator play, then you pretty much win because, I mean, they're probably already like over 20 cards deep out of their deck. So, something to consider when playing this deck. Uh, and then two Freezing Curse, it's basically just uh, a Forbidden Chalice. Really good. Uh, and then one copy of Smiting Storm, uh, when the opponent's low on cards in their deck and you can't make a mill, like, let's say five because they have less than five, then you just go Smiting Storm, make a mill however many. Basically just used to get out the uh, Runic Fusions. One copy of Talents, because against tier, this is disgusting. They try and use, like, Huff Menace on your turn, and then you can just Talents them. Uh, they try and hand trap you, and if you still have the gas to go through, you can just use Talents to draw two or rip a card out of their hand. Uh, one Terraforming, because we have a lot of field spells. Uh, and then one Monster Gate and one Reasoning. Um... It's, it's amazing, honestly. Like, I wish that this was at 3, but it'd probably be too disgusting here in the TCG. You activate Reasoning, even if the opponent knows to call level 1 because you're playing Cyber Valley. You don't give a shit about that. You just want to mill a bunch of Runic spells to the grave. Monster Gate just basically ensures that you will indeed get to the Cyber Valley, but they both just do the same thing. That you want to get these, hopefully, in, like, your opening hand or something, and then just move on with your day beating the opponent with all your Runic spells. And then one 1-day, one, one Call By, one Upstart, and then one Metaverse. 
um, you're playing basically a 38 card main deck between the one day and the upstart. I love being able to go one day and then just build them a bunch and then they try and OTK me and I'm like, well, you're under one day, so you can't win this turn. So I just kind of win. <laughs> Combos well too with uh, Heat Wave because then it's basically just like another copy of Heat Wave. Speaking of which, moving on to the side deck here. Uh, we are playing three copies of Lava Golem. We were playing Red Reboot, but now that that's banned, we threw in a second copy of the Ball Sack. <laughs> so uh, you want to be able to break boards as best as you can and as often as possible. Um, I've been debating whether or not I want to play one copy of Royal Decree, but that just seems really, really bad because then you're relying on hitting a one of when it's like I would rather maybe just play three copies of it because then that way you're able to out things like evenly. You're able to out things like Eradicator if, you know, you're playing against tier and you're going first and you couldn't really like mill them out a whole lot. And if they still have access to like Eradicator, Decree just shuts them out. Against Eldritch, it just shuts them out. And no one, at least from what I've seen, is playing Royal Decree right now. So that is something to consider uh, when playing this deck. I feel like that's an interesting side deck option. And then one copy of Paper Tops because it's just really good. And then this should be three copies. I'm waiting on one more copy in the mail. Heat Wave. This card is disgusting. Um, a lot of people don't realize that you can still set monsters under this. It just says that at the start of your main phase one, activate this card. Neither player can normal or special summon effect monsters until the end of the next turn. So I activate at the start of my turn. If I have any runic quick plays in my hand and I want to summon like Hugin, I can just chain it to still summon Hugin and get the effect. Uh, when it goes to my opponent's turn, they can set monsters. They just can't normal or special summon. So it gets the game back to my turn. So good, especially when you're going first. Um, I have had players like set monsters on me. Because you can still like set monsters, or if you're under a second heat wave, you can still flip summon. You just can't normally special summon, but you know, people don't read cards. <laughs> then we're playing three copies of MST because anti spell's a bitch. Three copies of Cosmic Cyclone because again, anti spell is a bitch. So the only thing we're missing from the side is the one heat wave that comes out to 15 cards in the side deck. So uh, with all that out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, I will go ahead and show you some opening hands real quick. All right, guys, so just to show you some opening hands real quick here, this is kind of what you're working with here. Let's see, three, four, and five. So this hand actually is not bad at all, especially because you opened up with three runic spells. And that's really like the perfect combination that you want to open up with because it gives you a lot of variety. Like in this case, you can go Smiting Storm, summon out Hugin. You can ditch a, let's say, I don't know, Freezing Curse to get the Fountain to hand. You can play the Fountain and then you Slumber to target uh, Hugin, make them mill three. The Fountain is going to send back all three of these spells and then you get to draw three cards. On top of that, you can also summon the Cyber Valley as well. Now, if we were to draw three cards, the three cards that we would be drawing would be the One Day Piece, the Dispelling, and the Dark Ruler No More. So now you're already guaranteed to get the game back to your turn. The One Day is going to draw you into Runic Tip. That's disgusting. Uh, and then if we were to draw two off of Cyber Valley, that gets us to Dispelling and Upstart, and then Upstart is going to get us to Dark Ruler. You start to see now how this deck can kind of start snowballing out of control. Um, so that is just a little example of what you can expect from this deck when it works in your favor, you know, I mean, you're playing a very rogue deck, you're not really inventing much in reinventing much in the wheel here. And that is something to keep in mind when the deck works, it absolutely works when it doesn't, you're going to fall flat on your ass and I'm not going to try and sugarcoat that for you. You are going to have tough matchups. You're not always guaranteed to beat tier, especially if tier goes first and they do hit the eradicator on you you just don't have an out for it. You know, Red Reboot's banned. Um, you have no way to out that exact card by keeping a counter trap in your hand like Red Reboot. It's just kind of something that you got to deal with, unfortunately, and, you know, hopefully maybe be able to play through it. I don't really see how you're going to do that unless, like, maybe you get, like, a Hugin or something established so that if the fountain does pop, you can banish the Hugin instead. I don't even know if that would even work under Eradicator, but regardless, that is something to keep in mind with this deck. Uh, if you are attempting to play it or test out this build. And again, this is based off the Oceanic build. We still have the YCS in Minneapolis to look at. Maybe there will be a Runic deck that tops there and kind of changes things up a bit. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below about Runic. Am I a dirty little bastard for playing this deck? I'm sure y'all will let me know in the comments below. Although, most of you guys, especially those sub to the channel, which you should do as well if you want to be part of the Avery Army, seem to like these rogue decks. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.